Friends and family of the late Vienna City Council member Tom Azinger talked about his legacy after his passing. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Phyllis Smith. Family and city officials are remembering the life of former Vienna City Council member, member Tom Azinger. Our Peyton Brooker reports. Tom Azinger served on the West Virginia House of Delegates for 22 years of his life. His son, Mike Azinger, who is now a West Virginia State Senator, remembers his dad for having much love for the state. Just kind of a, a, a regular guy, and uh, he had a genuine heart and love for the state of West Virginia, so it was easy for him to be, in my opinion, and, and just an outstanding legislator, and uh, one, one above where I, I can never really hope to ascend to. Along with his service in the state, Tom also was a member of the Vienna City Council for six years. Local officials in Vienna speak on what Tom meant for the city. Tom Azinger was probably uh, one of the most dedicated men that I've ever had the privilege of working with. I knew him both personally and professionally. Um, he was my insurance agent for a number of years, but then when he got into politics, um, he pretty much dedicated his life to it. He served not only two terms on Vienna City Council, but he served many terms with the legislature in Charleston. The quality of life that he led as far as uh, his integrity, uh, the kind of man he was uh, religiously, uh, that, that's the kind of man that most of us strive to be. I mean, you can't find much fault in a man like that at all. Mike Azinger adds he owes his dad a lot for his profession and his entire family. Dad paid the way I wouldn't, uh, I started in the house after he retired and as a, an opportunity in the Senate came up and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in the Senate for, for dad either. So I owe him a lot and all of us kids would say the same. We owe him a lot grandkids and great grandkids and his wife and my mom also. This is Peyton Brooker in Vienna, WTAP News. Turning to the weather now, some showers today. Meteorologist Kirk Greenfield joins us now with the first look at your forecast. Kirk? Well, those showers have been coming in waves and we're just about to see another one in the Parkersburg area. We're looking right now at the view on the Jan Dills Marietta Skycam at top of Lafayette Hotel. 78 degrees right now, feels like 81, the relative humidity 84%. That's pretty sticky. The winds are calm most recently and the pressure 29.86 inches is falling. When we take a look at our evening planner, we expect to be about 70 degrees at 8 o'clock. It looks like there could be a rumble of thunder here. And as we go through the evening, we expect to see the those showers come to an end as we head towards, so oh, say midnight will be about 69 degrees. Now we'll take a look at the rest of the forecast and decide when it's going to uh, potentially rain again when I return in just a moment. Back to you. Thank you, Kirk. Parkersburg residents who own pools may be able to get a credit on their sewer bills moving forward. The Parkersburg Utility Board is implementing a new swimming pool sewer credit policy. Pub customers who own pools of 2,000 gallons or more that do not empty into the city's sanitary sewer system are eligible. Pub General Manager Eric Bennett says the credit is for $6.75 per thousand gallons. Bennett says Pub is offering the credit in response to other utility providers offering similar credits. With recent legislation that was done for the PSDs, an assumption that inevitably they'll require municipals to do the same thing, we just opted to move forward after some recent interaction with customers. People can apply for the swimming pool sewer credit at the pub website or call pub for more information. You can find more details by going to WTAP.com. A vehicle drove into a building at the CAMC Telemedicine Building in Ripley this morning, according to Jackson County Dispatch. The call came in at 11 a.m. and it was reported multiple people were trapped inside the building after the crash. Everyone is now out. The Ripley Fire Department reports three people were transported to the hospital after being trapped underneath a car for 20 minutes. The cause of the crash is not known yet. 
Our community is built off the act of giving back. One Lodge is keeping that idea alive by helping local foster kids. The Marietta Moose Lodge donated starter kits for foster kids as they come into the system. Each kit has new clothes, a toothbrush, toothpaste, and other hygiene supplies. They are then put in a custom drawstring bag with a Tommy Moose plush doll. Child Services Administrator Alice Stewart says that donations like these mean a lot to the kids. A lot of times, you know, it's like just they're excited to have their own clean socks and underwear and, you know, not feel like that they're getting somebody else's hand-me-downs. Child Services is accepting donations and new foster families. For more information, you can head over to WTAP.com. A local church is offering support for grieving widows and widowers. WTAP reporter Logan Riggenbaugh is in Vienna with more. The 36th Street Church of Christ is offering a ministry named the Widow's Walk to those who have lost a spouse. It started when the grief minister Doug Koshorik and his wife lost their previous spouses and found solace with each other. They decided they wanted to help others who were facing the same hardship. Kishorek believes that the grief of losing a spouse is so profound that a support system is needed. Well, the relationship between a husband and a wife is the only relationship in Scripture that's spoken about as two becoming one. And so when a person loses a spouse, they don't become one again, they become a half. It's sometimes it's the only uh, life that they've known. The Widow's Walk is not just for grieving widows. For more information, visit our website at WTAP.com. Reporting from Vienna, I'm Logan Riggenbaugh for WTAP. This is home. The castle in Marietta will be hosting an archaeology field school camp for kids, teens, and adults for the next two weeks. The kids camp will be next week and the week after will be the adult camp. During the two camps, archaeologist Wesley Clark hopes to pass on a basic introduction to the methods of scientific, systematic archaeology. While the camp is different than the average camp you might see in the Mid-Ohio Valley, Clark says it's a one-of-a-kind experience that offers knowledge that people of all ages can use. The fact that we do archaeology and, and have these formal camps is very unusual. I think we're about the only place in the region where kids uh, of school age, in this case middle, middle school and high school, can come and take a camp like this. The kids camp registration is closed, but the castle still has available spots for the adult camp. A man from California who was paralyzed after getting hit by a car while riding his bike is able to water ski with an adapted water ski. Here's more from the series, The Good Side. I didn't know what I would be able to do or if I'd be able to do anything that I did before I got hurt. In October of 2020, Bassam Mansour was out riding his bike when he was hit by a truck, leaving him paralyzed from the waist down. I can't really walk. I have to use a wheelchair. There's a lot of other stuff that affects my body that no one really told me about. I just kind of had to figure it out on my own. Before the accident, Mansoor and his family lived an active lifestyle, something he wasn't sure he'd be able to continue. But to Chief Tahoe had other plans. He's excited to learn the sport. He wants to achieve independence as much as possible. He's willing to put the time and the effort in. Marina Gardner with Achieve Tahoe was part of the team that chose Mansoor to be the recipient of his very own adaptive water ski. It means everything to me to be able to get back on the water even after my injury. Ready, Bass? Yep, here we go. All right, just look forward, close your nose. What? Instead of two skis you stand on, Mansoor's new adaptive water ski is one long slab with a seat and restraints that only go on his feet. He says the new equipment had to take some getting used to. You start off on a ski that's really thick. Like I think the one that I started off was maybe about, I want to say it was like this wide. And it had these little outriggers on there that were meant to like balance it and just meant to keep you upright. So, and then you keep that ski, but then you take off the outriggers and then slowly as you get better, you just kind of go slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. Getting back into the sports he loves, Mansoor says it's made all the difference in his recovery. I think getting into adaptive sports and getting into something that gets you like active and 
and a, like around people is really crucial. Still ahead, we hear from Washington County officials about President Donald Trump's vice presidential pick, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. That story is next at 6. Showers and storm chances continue through the evening with a cold front approaching for tomorrow. That's next.